Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Mile High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And we're here with another Wednesday episode sponsored by Gray Fox Games, our awesome Wednesday sponsors. The the new South by Southwest Gamers Voice award-winning Sukiyumi. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't. Which isn't really their game. They're helping King with the mini. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it was uh, Route 1, like, best game, but then that one won. Like, the People's Choice People's Award. People's Choice Award. Yeah. yeah. I think that was, like, the day after we recorded our yes. review. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I it was buy. because of our review. It yeah. brought, yeah, it it really brought attention. Brought it right over to yeah. that award that I've never heard of before. <laughs> and you know what? I'm glad, like, they they finally started uh, posting uh, pictures of those minis, and we can confirm no swing and dick. No swing and dick. No swing and dick. <laughs> I went back and looked at the swinging dick. Yeah. yeah. It is not there. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> was it Was it still there in no. the background art? T- no. Either? No. Nope. Swinging no. dick no, has been. Like a con- codpiece sort of thing. So. Yeah. Swinging dick. It's been gate. contained. <laughs> it needed containment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the the boar mother also has a lot more clothes on. She no longer has six boobs. Well, I mean, uh, she might still have six boobs. You just don't see. Yeah, them. she's more clothed than in the original. Is she more motherly? No, I mean, she's still kind of like a boar, but I sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right on. Are you saying that boars can't be moms? This one is a lot of a mom. Yes, That's... It, yes it is. <laughs> <laughs> the most mom. Yep. Uh, so, how's everybody's uh, week been? Uh, it's okay. Uh, St. Patrick's Day was this weekend. Yeah, how'd that go for you as a driver? Uh, I I continue my tradition of on St. Patrick's Day or whatever day they're celebrating all the shit, uh, which was Saturday this year. Mm-hmm. I brought one person into downtown. I took one person out of downtown and said fuck that and turned off my app. <laughs> 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 nice. I ended up working a bit later that night, but it was away from downtown, and I made sure that nobody was going to downtown. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. We I- uh we started D and D. Nearly an hour late because Leander went to the parade. St. Patty's Day stuff beforehand and then couldn't get up here in any kind yeah. of reasonable amount of time. Yeah. No, traffic was shit down there. And oh, pe- people I, are shit. Yeah, I, I stayed, People I, are shit. That's that's the I truest like, thing you've ever you, said. You, you people are way too drunk for 2 p.m. <laughs> oh, yeah. You start at 7 yeah. or earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last time I did that was kegs and eggs like three years ago. Got in line at like 3.30. Got yep. in at like 7.30. And just was just hammering giant green beers until noon. Yep. I, I got a note through uh, Google Maps, like, because I contribute over there. And they're like, hey, somebody posted a question about our bought a beer and tap house. And it was like, serve, question mark, green beer, question mark, patties, question mark. <laughs> and I was like, wow, how drunk are you that you're using the Google Maps, like, question and answer forum to answer this one random question like call them like just just call them hey do you have green beer uh, uh, green, uh, green beer, beer. Uh, green beer. Uh, you, buddy. which if i got that call and worked at a bar bar i'd be, be like, like no <laughs> nope even if you did i am dying and uh had brunch on saturday and then went to uh d bolts thing after we had played some games and they had green beer and that was my green beer allotment they had their new D bolt light. It's just D bolt. Yeah, light. It's a lager. I know. It was all right. I'm, and it was green. Yeah, I'm okay not drinking green beer. Yeah, but I'm also okay not really celebrating a, a holiday that basically glorifies over drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and well, I just I love how that's like the American approach to foreign holidays is like, how can we make this about drinking? Yeah, that's oh, sure. Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. yeah, like this is a real holiday somewhere for us drinking. Lots Margar- and lots of drinking. Margs on Margs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where's, they my, where's my gin and tonic holiday? That's what I, <laughs> that's what I want to know. <laughs> no, it's Thanksgiving there, and Christmas? Uh, there isn't one because gin and tonic is awful. No. That's, Incorrect. That's good. Um, Armistice Day. <laughs> <laughs> VJ Day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And that's, that's vermouth Anytime. and gin, but with a J. <laughs> <laughs> so that it matches GIF. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. GIF yes. and gin. <laughs> yeah. Anything else exciting happened for you um, guys? And then I wanted to die Sunday, so I went to the grocery store and bought cold medicine, and then went home. Yeah. And died. I'm glad. Well, you I'm glad your ghost was here to come with us. My ghost still made it to Monday. Your ghost is still a patron of <laughs> Wendy's, apparently. <laughs> Absolutely loves Wendy's. <laughs> it's that junior bacon cheeseburger, uh-huh. man. It ABC. is like the best thing that Wendy's does. Yeah. 
I like the double stack more, but I haven't had that. Maybe you should have it. I guess it doesn't have bacon, so oh, pass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can get it with bacon. Maybe. Then you're ruining the integrity of the double stack. You know, I'm not sure the ghost can make these decisions <laughs> for dead Jeff. <laughs> so is the ghost eating it, or is the ghost just shoving it in dead Jeff's face? Um, I want to say it's eating it, and then it's falling out the bottom of the ghost. Oh, like uh, Ghostbusters? Yeah, yes. Like Slimer, okay. Yeah. Slimer Jeff. Yeah. There's no stomach. It's just eating and then f- falling out. That's the best way ghosts eat. I mean... Realistically, that's what humans do. It just takes a while. <laughs> I hate how not wrong you are. Just comes out of the bottom mm-hmm. some point. Yeah. <laughs> it just sounds like they have a very efficient digestive system. Absolutely. All the ghost power yeah. they need for their day. <laughs> Holy shit. I sound like garbage. Yeah, yeah you yeah. sound real raspy. <laughs> Did you take one of these yet? No, not yet. I really wanted to wait. It doesn't hurt. Okay. But... I've, I act, I took it out. Okay. It's right here. Because I, I didn't want to ah. chew it on air. Okay, yeah. yeah. You can just put that oh, back yeah. out. Mm-hmm. We now went from raspy Jeff to cough drop Jeff. Yeah. Mouth noises have increased a thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> These are strong. I know. I told you. Chloroseptic. Max. Max. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh. Yeah. No, it's if you want the entire room to smell like cherry, that's it's, what you get. It's like if a cherry ghost invaded my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you feel the whole ghost. Yeah, yeah. Just pretty <laughs> way much. up in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who knew that ectoplasm was really benzocaine? <laughs> <laughs> I should have. Oh, uh, yeah. They just had to go to the drugstore. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of, uh, well, not at all speaking of that, but <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try Excellent and. Excellent transitions, yeah. Zach. Uh, I rewatched Get Out. This past weekend, oh, I, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not seen that yet. You should fucking see I, it. I yeah, because we can't talk about it if you haven't, I haven't seen it. I know I don't. I don't have any spoilers for that no, movie. So I, I wasn't gonna say. All I was gonna say is still a great movie. Oh yeah, yeah still um, real good. I really want to go watch their new one. This yes, time. us. I have not seen the trailer besides the first one yeah, for us, and I really want to see that's, that. That's yeah, because my roommate hadn't seen uh, Get Out yet. So I was like, well, let's fucking see this. We watched that. <laughs> yeah, she was like. Fuck, that's good. And then we started talking about it and whatnot. And then she was like, "All right, let me see the trailer for us." And I showed her the trailer, and she's like, "Oh, I remember this. This definitely looks to be getting a, a bit more horror than Get Out was." And I'm like, "Yes, that's true." But also, she's like, "And I don't really know what's going on." And I'm like, "You're not wrong." And that is exact. That after I saw this trailer, I was like, "I don't need to see anything else." Yeah, I'm looking forward to his Twilight Zone series. Yes, same here on CBS All Access. Yeah. Which I've been watching Star Trek Discovery on. We're really shilling things today, aren't yeah. we? We're not CBS getting paid for any of this. No, no. Wolf here. Or septic max. I mean, I'll <laughs> fucking <laughs> DC just... Universe one for Doom Patrol. Keep keep that train going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super good. Mm-hmm. I haven't caught up on the Orville because I've lost Hulu access. Gotcha. And you can watch it at Fox.com, but it has like a timer. Yeah. And you before like you can watch like one hour worth of TV on there before you have to log in with your cable provider uh, to lame. watch it online. So do you, you, do you have uh, Spotify? No. Okay, because Spotify and Hulu. Are I now, saw. Yeah. Oh wait, they are. Yes. Yeah. So your Spotify Premium includes Hulu? Yes, I think so. It might not be commercial free Hulu, but it's yes. Hulu. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm on my mom's commercial free. So. Yeah. So fuck it. Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. No. No. Um, I'm on my mom's Amazon Prime. Mm. I have my own Amazon Prime because I'm an adult. I had my own Amazon Prime, and then it, I, it costs like $130. I would, I would never like, use no. $130 a exactly. year, and my mom just has it. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure I've used $130 the last year of shipping just ordering podcast supplies. Yeah, exactly. So, so. hence, we don't we don't need No, we don't. <laughs> yeah. But I also mean don't don't claim it's a podcast expense and give yourself a hundred and thirty dollars. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you guys just gave me permission to if do you, that. If you do that, then we're all fucking getting it. <laughs> That's like Gen Con badges worth of Amazon Prime. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't go to Gen Con. Instead, I paid for Amazon Prime. That's not how it works. No, it's not how it works, Adrian. <laughs> not at all. Today's episode brought to you by ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't have anything nearly as exciting happen. I did my first week at my new job. So you um, hate it, and you want you were looking for a new job. No, and as a matter of fact, uh, in a fun, you new love twi- your job, and you're looking for a new job. No, no, <laughs> closer, but no. Um, in a fun twist of of you, my normal you quit job your experiences. Job. God damn it! <laughs> no, also no. Uh, I, I today I was telling Megan about my day on my drive home, and she interrupted me at one point and was like, "I like how you're already referring to things the company does as we." It's like, oh yeah, I guess you're right. 
They've really they've indoctrinated me in that first week. Nice. Uh, it's been an incredibly boring week, but not bad. Training week. Yeah. So I've been mostly sitting in a cubicle, ooh, clicking through training modules yeah. and reading like that's, operating talk like tech documents and things. It's not as fun as your, familiar. It's not as fun as your first day at Epic. Hey, here's a forklift. You're gonna learn how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think that they waited till day two for that. For I that waited until day two with you. Yes. <laughs> um. And I, to be fair, I had driven a forklift before Epic. Yeah. Just not regularly enough to feel like proficient where I'm like, I know how to drive a forklift. My experiences driving them in the old shop were mostly getting it stuck in a weird corner. So, so, so like where I had done the like Austin Powers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I actually try and give people guidance, unlike them with me. And we're just like, here you go. Have fun. Don't kill anyone. Go ahead and lift six pallets of beer. See how that goes. Yeah. Really get a feel for the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I went and had new higher orientation today after a week of working there. Uh, and the president, who's retiring after 20 years of the company. Oh, God, Trump uh, came to see you? No, not not the president. <laughs> you just, you just said the president the pre- of the company. There you go. Uh, <laughs> he did his last new higher orientation. And the lady who apparently runs the new higher orientations was actually getting teary that she was that he was leaving. So he's apparently been a really good boss. That's cool. So now I get to be there like when they get the new shitty boss who ruins everything the fun old boss did. Yeah. So that's my, the best part. My enjoyment will only last the last two weeks that he's still there. That's two weeks. That's a lot more than your previous jobs. Yes. Mm-hmm. More than most of my recent jobs. I, I liked the old shop for about my first year. It wasn't until about a year in. It it was a, like a year and a half in when I went on vacation. And they'd originally hired me saying, hey, we'd like to get you trained up, get you kind of familiar with things, then send you to school to finish your engineering degree, and you'll be our in-house engineer. And I went on a two-week vacation to Guatemala, and I came back, and they had hired an engineer. (laughs) I was like, oh, so I guess this means you're not going to send me to school to finish my degree to be your engineer. Mm -hmm. And uh, you didn't, did you invite any of them to go to Guatemala? No. Rookie move. Yeah, rookie move. (laughs) Yes, sure. Don't you know so. if you bring gum, you gotta have enough for the whole class. So, and if you go to Guatemala, you gotta bring in all your coworkers. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> At all times. At all times. <laughs> it's uh, like The Bachelor. Oh God. <laughs> You're just doing fun events out in the jungle or something. Sure. With to non-existent TV cameras. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So far, I like the job. I also like that it pays more than any job I've had in the last ten years. That helps. That does help. It's big. That's that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out I like money. I like money. So that's what I've been up to. Nothing else much. My High Dungeon Delvers recorded another episode over Ooh. the weekend. So that'll be part of what I talk about. The St. Patrick's Day traffic nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah. That's, uh. I guess that's about all we've been up to. Not a super exciting week, despite there being a big drinking holiday. They're like today. I have a very exciting day at work for me. Yeah. Because I'm going to be going back full time now. Oh. Ooh. Uh. Everything has changed there. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you, you broke your leg and they're like, yes, now we can change everything they while change, Jeff's gone. Change it all. Um, they, they mad had, had her. <clears throat> they hired a new like logistics overlord in a whole new position. So he's my, now my boss's boss, who used to be like the high end. Mm-hmm. Now there's a whole new dude. Um, they had a job fair and everyone quit and then they hired a bunch of new people. So everyone's new. Um, <laughs> you just come in and you're like, Is it, where's that? Did Epic move somewhere? <laughs> Does anyone know I work here? <laughs> okay, I can just leave, right? And then just because just, I'm just gonna go hang out the wall in that room for a while. Yeah. No one's gonna miss me. Um, <laughs> that's basically what happened. I because I broke my leg and a bunch of people left. I knew they were leaving, but I never got to say bye. Our uh, brewery manager left. Justin, our packaging manager Holy Bryce shit. left. Holy shit! Uh, our tap room manager Juliana left. Holy shit! Uh, so all those people, a bunch of people got promoted and moved up. Our uh, head brewer. Or I guess going to be new head brewer Dicky. He's going to be. He's kind of the new head brewer. Well, yeah, he's he's sort of doing operations manager thing right now. And nice, yeah, good for Dicky. Yeah, Um, it was just weird coming in, and he was like, "Hi, I'm Scott. I run logistics stuff." And I was like, "Did Greg? What happened to Greg? What happened to Greg? Oh, Greg's still here." I was like, "Okay, good." (laughs) So your your one lifeline. Yeah, basically. Uh, so that was a change. Uh, and then I have like three new people that I need to know that are in the warehouse, including a lady. Oh, oh. nice. Ingrid. Ingrid. <laughs> that immediately makes me think of Ingrid Goes West. Mm. 
uh, which was a movie with uh, Audrey Plaza. Audrey Plaza, where she goes and super social media stalks some Instagram chick. Ah, I have not met her yet because she just started today, and I was at the brewery, and she was off at the death cooler that is the pressery. <laughs> the death cooler. <laughs> the power went out after that huge snowstorm. Oh yeah. yeah, which that was the thing. Like as I right as you started to talk, I remember that that was something we forgot to mention. Mm-hmm. Is that we we the Mile High Game guys successfully survived the bomb cyclone, <laughs> the ultra blizzard. Yeah. That descended on Denver and fucked shit up for about four to six hours. Yep. With very high winds. Yes. Yeah. And it did fuck shit up. I mean, there yeah. was a lot of no, power 100, down. No, 100%. And... Like, people shouldn't have gone out when that was happening. I was at Lyft today renewing my thing, and apparently there were people trying to get cars from Lyft during the cyclone. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> of like, course there were. Yeah. I didn't see if it actually hit the uh, new record barometer low. It did for Kansas. Okay. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Yeah, it was like the same pressure as a Category 2 hurricane. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, but after the snow stopped around 5 or so, the roads were decent. No, yeah. I'd say even earlier than that. Yeah. Like, it pretty much petered off and for me up here in Arvada by about 3. Yeah. And the roads were, like, fine when I went to go get Zach at about 5. Yeah, because you guys night. still did game night. We still did game night. Yeah. Yeah, I got some messages early in the day. It was like, I'm really worried about this storm. Like, do we still want to do game night? And people on Facebook were like, are we still going to do game night? I had Andrew, the hater, do the Reddit post. And people were, like, downvoting the shit out of it and posting things <laughs> like, don't go out. Why would you do this? It was like, what's it, like, 6 o'clock? It's way later in the day. And then I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm going to run game night because I still want to go play games. And I have. Uh, and well, they were open. They were open. I have a vehicle that I feel comfortable driving in pretty bad weather. And. I know how to drive in bad weather. Yeah. So and it was at that time it wasn't even bad weather anymore. It was just it had snowed. Well, when it got po- I mean, I still made oh, had yeah, to yeah, make yeah. the post at like noon yeah, when it yeah. was in the middle of everything. Sideways snow. <laughs> yes. Um, but you know, people are ostensibly adults and can make their own decisions. Yeah. I will be there, or maybe I won't, depending. Like it could mm-hmm. if it had snowed like that all day and was like that at six thirty, I might have been like I'm not we were, going to game night. We were on kind of the southwest edge yeah. of the whole thing. We missed a, a good chunk of it. Yeah. It was weird for me because I got up and I went to work. Uh, I had to be at work at 7, so I left here a little before 6.30, and it was like pouring rain, like hard yeah. pouring rain the whole way in. And I had known it was going to rain and then transition to snow. I just expected that to happen overnight, not at 9 o'clock in the morning. Like It rained it so like weird. 6.30 when I was driving in. It kept raining until about 8.00. And then it started to slowly shift to snow. And then by 10, it was like, yeah. And yeah. then by 1130, they actually put out a, at where I work now, they put out a campus wide, like, we're closed. Everybody go home. Like, get the fuck out. Which you said it was like first time ever? Uh, first time in like eight years. Okay. That they closed the plant. The production lines shut down. Shut it all down. Which then apparently caused a bunch of problems when third shift came on and tried to start it back up because some machines don't like to be turned off and turned back on. Don't turn it off and back on again. Yeah, that's not the proper procedure for fixing some machines, apparently. Apparently. Um, I also learned, since I've been working there this first week and talking to people, they are just now finally finishing the last little bit of uh, reconstruction from damage from that wicked hailstorm two years ago when you still worked at Target. Wow. Yeah, apparently it did uh, something stupid like $12 million in damage. Holy shit. They said almost every car that was parked in their parking lot got totaled. Wow. Yeah, damaged a bunch of solar panels. They have the second largest private solar farm in Colorado, second only to New Belgium Brewery. Oh. And it got fucked in that that, that hailstorm. Hailproof solar panels. Yes. I also learned just today that the reason they have a light rail stop, like directly adjacent to their employee parking, is because they gave that land to the city of Denver to build a light rail stop. Nice. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So. Well, that's not bad then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's cool. Fun stuff. So the power went out Weather. at our shipping warehouse due to Not that. Not surprised. Uh, yeah, it's because it's trash. Yeah. Uh, and it didn't come back on until the weekend. So I had to ship out all the stuff from Friday today. Yeah. And that's the end of my story. There we go. <laughs> that wraps up Denver weather and current events. Yes. So we can now move on to what we've been playing. Yep. Uh, like I alluded to, I did D&D on Saturday. Uh, it was episode 12 of the Mile High Dungeon Delvers. How, how many episodes are you guys doing with this first until the story's done. Okay. We don't have a set number per season. Okay. Um, where, yeah. And we might do it roughly. Or, like, I think Wes might be planning on a year of content for the first season. So when we come back around to the fall and get approaching our, I don't know, I guess for us, that'd be episode 26. 
because we're doing it every other week. Um, somewhere around then, I think he might be trying to wrap up, and then we'll make a decision if we want to keep going in that world, like what happens next and have another big story arc in that world. Gotcha. Or if we want to scrap it and do another system, like we might... We originally started as the Mile High Dungeon Delvers RPG podcast, and we're thinking that each season would be even maybe a different RPG, a different setting. Oh. So that maybe next you know, season two is Star Wars RPG. Season three is Lord of the Rings RPG or something like that. You can get some different dice for Star Wars RPG. Yeah. Um, and, and not enough of them. Yeah. <laughs> but so I don't I don't know if that's that's was the tentative plan, but we'll see where we feel about all that. We all really like fifth edition, so we might just keep it might just be a fifth edition podcast now. Mm. I don't know. Um, we haven't gotten that far. We're still a ways from anything major story happening 12 episodes in. So I feel like <laughs> it's probably going to go past 26. Like, I, like major, like, no, we haven't, we have not yet affected the world around us. Mm. We've, we've been following a buildup. Like there's definitely a story arc that's showing up in the episodes, but it's not like we're already trying to overthrow kingdoms or anything. It's like Dragon Ball. Yeah. The real slow burn. Yeah. All right. Let me know when screaming. Uh, MHDD <laughs> Kai comes out. Yeah. <laughs> Cut that shit down to what I need to know. Yeah. Um, we... I don't want to see shit about getting a driver's license or something. <laughs> no, none of that. Um, yeah. I'm uh, still having a lot of fun with it. It's easily one of the most fun things I'm doing right now. Uh, I was up at the condo a couple of weeks ago, like hanging out with Megan, and I was pretty wiped out. It was my birthday weekend with all that powder. I was laying around really tired. She's like, do you want to play a game? And I was like, I mean, D&D, but other than that, <laughs> no. Uh, so then I took a nap. Um, yeah, really enjoying it. Uh, actual board games that I played, though, uh, the three of us all got our first game of Dino in. Uh, that's coming up in the review cycle, so we're going to start playing that. Uh, this is the first time I played it since the Kickstarter. I played a prototype copy before the Kickstarter or during the Kickstarter, something like that. Because it was designed here in Denver. Yep. Uh and I I liked it. I remember really liking it and thinking it had like a fairly tight worker placement game and everything. Uh, I don't know if it's changed a bit or if I just I've changed since then. Like it was like two years ago. Uh, but I the randomness of the cards was way, way noticeable for me in the game we just played uh, and did not make uh, for the happiest uh, of the DNA cards. And yeah. The- yeah, I don't remember what the the actual name of the espionage cards yeah. or something like that yeah intrigue the, the, the super powerful cards <laughs> yeah. yeah ridiculously powerful um but i still overall enjoyed it i came in last no i think i got second, second. yeah I, I managed to pull off second yeah because i pulled off t-rex and got a scandal yeah and i couldn't get rid of any scandals yeah so uh but we'll be playing some more of that here in the the coming times that was your first time ever playing it right Jeff? yes what did you kind of think rough rough thought no. S- rough thoughts everyone's score was super close until zach got that one card and then it was me and you <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty much like the first two seasons it was like at the end of season scoring it was like we're all the same score and then uh i pulled season out. two was like jeff's one point ahead of uh-huh. zach and i tied at another sc- I, and i kept that one point ahead until for a while and then zach was like oh yeah i'm gonna start scoring an extra 10 points and like it's over for you too yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that was unfortunate i don't know i thought it went pretty well yeah, of course you did. <laughs> uh, and in its current comparison to Dinosaur Island, no less table space taken up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're both table hogs. Yeah. Player board's cool, though. Yeah. Uh, aside from Dinogenics, at game night, I played Ex Libris. Uh, if you are part of the Slack channel, you probably saw some of the discussion going on there. Uh, I did not like Ex Libris. Uh, Which I, is fine. I knew I wasn't going to like Ex Libris about... I don't know, half to three quarters of the way through the rules explanation. <laughs> and I was certain about that by about half to three quarters of the way through the first turn. Uh, <laughs> when, he made, when he made a, uh, a mistake, a oh. strategy mistake, and then he had one extra worker that he couldn't do anything with. Mm. I mean, like I said, I wish I could go back and replay exactly what happened because I'm pretty sure I had reasons for what I was doing. Well, there are obviously bad sense. reasons. Because, yeah. <laughs> well, you clearly are not the Mensa Select winner type. So, <laughs> I'm increasingly certain that Mensa Select is a bunch of chimpanzees throwing darts at a board, <laughs> choosing things. This is like the second Mensa Select game that I've been like, this is a stupid game. What was the other one? I don't remember. Mm. That's why you're not Mensa Select. No. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> um, also, Origins Awards Best Card Game. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can definitely agree that um, I think once that like that three quarters of the way through the first term, you're like, I can see why there was a lot of hype. And then I heard nothing about it afterwards. I said that during the rules. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but cause, I think Paul liked it the best and it was still like six, six point five for his rating. And I was yep. like, yeah, I can agree with a six. It's it was fine. Um, the pl- pair, uh, the player powers were definitely varied in their ability, uh, but also <laughs> in their strength, I would say. Yes. Um, and some were a lot more interactive than others. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, and it went, I will say though, it definitely went quicker than I was expecting it to. Oh man, it felt like it took so long. <laughs> it did not even, t- <laughs> it, it took like, like was, 45 minutes. felt like I was there for hours. 45 minutes. Yeah. I legitimately, you could have told me it was a two hour game and I would not have been surprised. <laughs> um, after that, though, we were, I was going to play Root, and you guys still did play Root. Yes. Um, oh, right. Yeah. But Megan ended up getting back from the mountains because she wasn't sure she would even make it out of the mountains because this was the day of the bomb cyclone, and the roads, were, the highway was closed for a good chunk of the day. But they're pretty um, good about getting that yeah. open. But they got it open, and she was debating about go- just going home or coming out, and so she decided to come out. So I bailed on Root uh, so that I could play a game with her when she got there because she would have been pissed if she decided to come all the way to game night and walked in the door and everybody else was playing something and she just had to sit there and do nothing. So yeah. I, I I took the wise move and said, hey guys, I'm not going to play Root. I'm going to wait for Megan to show up and play something with Megan. Uh, we played a two-player game of Dutch Blitz that we stopped after two rounds and 40-point difference. Uh, her 40 points ahead of me. Uh, she kicked my ass at Dutch Blitz. And then that was about the time that Mike Jones and V showed up and... Uh, V had Azul with uh, some of the expansions. So they had uh, the two two new tiles that go in like in the workshop spaces and the wild the uh, tiles, the Joker tiles. And so the way the new spaces work is there's two of them. One of them is a space where when you take a... And they replace two the, of the previous ones. Yeah, they replace ones. two. So of, it's, it's not like you have nine now or whatever. Yeah, so. you have the same number of workshops, but one of them... When you take a tile from it, instead of pushing the remaining three into the center, you just leave them so they don't ever go into the center. And then the other one, instead of pushing them into the center, you push it to one of the two adjacent piles. So you could conceivably have a pile with seven uh, tokens on it, which would be kind of an interesting thing uh, that we didn't see happen. But uh, Mike Jones said in one of the ones he did, they did them randomly, and those two ended up next to each other. And so people kept taking from the one that moves it and then moving it onto the one where they just stay there. And making ridiculous piles. Uh, I have yet to play Azul, so I have no idea what you're talking oh, about. Oh, God damn it. That's right, Jeff. <laughs> uh, we also played on the gray side, um, which I didn't hate as much as the first time I did it with Paul and everybody after playing on the other side for a bit. But I'm still not convinced that it's the better side. I think it has some strengths, but I think the other side does as well. Um, I've and- heard there's a giant version of this game. <laughs> there is <laughs> uh, a ridiculously giant version of this game. But I still liked it. I hadn't played it in a long, long time. Um, This was a good reminder of like, hey, that Azul game, still pretty good. Pretty, pretty okay. Yeah, that's what I played. What'd you play, Jeff? Um, uh, The the Dinogenics. And then on Saturday, (laughs) went over to Bullshit Paul's place. Yep. And then played with Zach and the hater, Andrew himself. A couple games. Uh, you guys were playing cribbage, yeah. To start with, where you fucking annihilated, I, I almost annihilated Paul. Yeah, I well, I I skunked Andrew in the first game, and then I almost skunked Paul in the second game. Nice. Uh, and then after that, we played an exit. What as as part of the new trilogy? It was one of the newer ones. It was Dead Man on the Orient Express. So it was on a train. Yep. Uh, this was one of the harder ones. This was a four, four out, out of five. five yeah. yeah. Which a lot of the recent ones I'd played were two or three. So it was nice to get a harder one. Because mm-hmm. uh, some of those easier ones have like a linear progress that you do. Yeah. You're like, hey, solve this page. Now you can go to the next page. This one was, all right. Open book. Open book. And so that's why, like, as soon as I saw that, I was like, all right, let's time to take those staples out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we once again had a process of, no, don't cut it. Yeah. No, no. I'm taking the scissor. It was way out of your range of reach <laughs> because no, we should not cut that. It's like literally says it at the top there. Yeah. Like anyone that wants to cut something. Something was supposed to be Very cut. rhymy. Yeah. Like don't cut this shit up. Yeah. Uh, and that was very vital once we figured out what the hell was actually going on with it. Yes. Because uh, if we cut it up, that would have been very hard. Yeah. Um, 
They keep throwing new shit at us, which is always good. Yeah. It's it was an enjoyable one. Mm-hmm. Um don't cut too much. Yeah, don't cut it's, too much. Yeah. You know, that's this game. Yeah. Or not enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh we had we had <laughs> there were definitely a couple times in this where we solved a particular thing too early so that when we needed to use it, we didn't know what it was for. Um you remember what I'm talking about? <sighs> not off the top of my head. Nine. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, oh. Yeah, and so, like, yeah, we were just like, Ugh. and I was like, oh, then, shit, we had this. We kind of went back yeah. through, and we're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, ah. now, it makes, now it makes sense, yeah. There was definitely one that it was, like, sort of cr- bullshitty, but mo- for the most part, they were they were good. I liked them. But, but that was fun. Yeah, it was fun. We, we got uh, we got a 11 of 12 stars. 11 of eleven of 10 stars, we'll say. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I, our, I think our best performance in uh, quite some time. Yes, yeah. I would agree with that. No uh, clues. No clues. No. Though, there are definitely times people wanted to use it, but mm-hmm. it was like, no, we're better than that. Yeah, and we were. Yes. Definitely had one where it had the most subjective clue <laughs> that I've seen in a while. Yes, yeah. Um, where it's it's not, you don't know where you have to kind of line it up and mm-hmm. point and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, we got around that too, though. Yes, we did. <laughs> uh, and then after exit, we had a whole plethora of game options there on the table, we had Ex Libris uh-huh. and uh, Root and uh, Fuse Flatline. And we we're like, let's play Flatline, like one of those games that we just sort of play and like and then just never go back to. Yep. Uh, yep. So we had to sort of relearn the rules a little bit, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, went through and played Fuse Flatline. Had a lot of unused dice on certain rounds. Yeah. And it wasn't so much that we... We just couldn't use them. It was just like there wasn't anywhere that you could put them that were going to solve or yeah resolve or anything like that. <laughs> but then also in a, we ran it like, I'm sure had we looked at our stuff better, like, yeah. and, and just the fact that we hadn't played in years, like we'd have been like, yeah. oh no, here, blah, you know, do this. And then when we could have figured out better ways to, to utilize those dice, but. Yeah. Or we were burning too much dice on certain cards and, yes. not, and not actually solving the patients yep. and all that kind of mm-hmm. fun stuff. Uh, we ended up losing. Yeah, we got one of the blue cards where it pulls like a power cube off of your timeline and it pull, and then we rolled the die and then it hit that one and pulled the last cube and it was like, you don't even get a final round, fuckers. Yep, but uh, that's what we did for, that's what we get for, because we couldn't do, we like the um, recharge things were locked down. Multiple times. Multiple, but it was specifically when it was the three card yeah. uh, health thing uh, and then it went back up to four and five and I'm like, oh, we'll wait for it to come back down to three. But the three was the last cube. Yeah. So if you fucked that, like if we had something like that happen, it meant that we lost the game. And so yep. we knew that that was a ch- like we were taking a risk by doing that. Yeah. So we lost. Yes, we did. Uh, I mean, we were rolling seven die for pretty much like the whole thing, too. At least half of it. Yeah. yeah. We were just being able to get our power ups as you like cure bomb patients or whatever yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the bomb went off. The, the bomb and fuse went off, and now we're healing them. Yes. Uh, and then the power ran out, and then the last four people died. So I hope I hope <laughs> the next game is, um, it's basically the patients we're trying to uh, to save here don't get saved, and then, and then it's a mortuary game. <laughs> <laughs> fuse. Yeah. Got to get rid of these bodies. Yep. Because obviously we can't succeed. Obviously. In canon. <laughs> canon. In, in, future, in future medical bay or maybe it's maybe it's going to be an electrical team that is trying to turn back on the power because you ran out of power or something. Maybe. I haven't, said, I haven't said anything about Fuse in a while. Yeah, I haven't heard anything in a long time. Yeah. Yep. It was fun. I like Fuse, Flatline, and Fuse. You can like both. We'll yeah, let you do that. It's this. okay. Yeah. We'll allow it. <laughs> this time. <laughs> but only this time. Yep. It's, nice, it's nice going back to old games. Those right. old, old right. trash games from like... Two years ago. 15 months ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes it doesn't work out so well. Nah. <laughs> like Ex Libris. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Zach? What did you play? Um, all those things you guys said. Uh, the only thing that I was in, I played that you guys didn't was Root. Like you were saying, uh, we had five players. Uh, so we were playing with the expansion, and we had every The old expansion. The old expansion. Not the new one. Not the new, new one. <laughs> um, so we had the cats, the birds, Vagabond the River Folk Company, and the Woodland Alliance. And uh, I understand why in the rule changes or the tweaks for um, the Woodland Alliance, they're make, they're nerfing them because they are super powerful if everybody doesn't just keep crushing them down. 
Uh-huh. And it's and it and you take a pretty heavy penalty for crushing them too, I mean, right? To an extent, like you get a point for destroying some of their shit, but it's always like you're losing cards and you're giving them cards to do so. Yeah. Um, but really, um, the cats are good at doing that, and the cat person decided to fuck with me more okay. than the Woodland Alliance as much. <laughs> uh I was the birds. Oh. Yeah. Uh the eerie dynasties, and I did not go into Fit, decline. No, decline the entire game. Wow. I had like 12 cards at the end of the game. Which is fucking ridiculous. And it's because the cat person kept attacking me in the same spots. Like there was the fox, like there are two fox spots that people kept attacking me in that I kept being able to use to attack there. Yeah. Because like I had like three attacks. One was a wild, but then two were two were foxes. So I had to do two battles a turn there. People just kept filling up the foxes yes. over and over. Yeah. Instead of just being like, all right. No one go in the fox this yeah. round and let Zach burn. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, then you go down to what? One? Zero cards, right? Is uh, it wipe? Uh, yeah, it wipes. I would go down. I think I had four bird cards in there. Yeah. So I would have lost four points and then um, I would have lost a turn and whatnot. Uh, I yeah. ended up, I might have gotten third overall because Paul ended up winning his Woodland Alliance. Um, then if he didn't win, Wes was probably going to win. And there was really nothing we could do about it that much, especially because who was Wes? Wes was the River Folk Company. Oh, okay. Um, people kept feeding him meeples. Yes. And well, and the problem was that he didn't like people weren't really destroying his otters, so he had no reason to bring guys out. So he was just sort of keeping uh, Paul and I's meeples that we used to spend on cards and stuff okay. for that. Um, <clears throat> but the main problem was that Paul, by choice. Uh, set away as set away as far as possible from me because he knew I would come over there and wreck his shit if I could. <laughs> uh, Fair enough. Yeah, sounds like Paul's uh, using meta game knowledge to cheat a bit. Mm. I also try to sit as far away from Zach as possible yeah. in almost every game. <laughs> <laughs> it's why I won all three games of Suki Yumi. Yeah, because there's at least one game where the only reason I won was because Zach couldn't get to me. <laughs> yes, due to the West Richard Wall. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, and then and V keeps unintentionally sitting to my left. That does not work out well for her. <laughs> you no. th- you'd think she'd learn. Yeah. V, don't sit next to Zach. No. Even to the right of Zach is a dangerous spot. What, one of the games I played with her, uh, this was a couple weeks ago, she did end up switching halfway through, but then she kept getting, it was a card game, uh, and she kept getting rid of cards, and I was like, oh, actually, I do need that one. Oh, actually, I do need that one. Thank <laughs> you. And she's like, God damn it, no matter what I do, I'm helping Zach. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, yeah, that's... Your only choice is not to play. Yeah, exactly. That's the only <laughs> way to move is to cause a nuke. <laughs> <laughs> Destroy the world. Yeah. Then there's no winners. Yeah. It's the best outcome there is. Yep. Just like the World Council. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Right on. It's a bad game. So that catches us up on what we've been playing. Is that it? I think so. Wow. Jeff, do you have a bloody minute? No, uh, I don't. Uh, there won't be a bloody minute until next week. There was something funny that Ant threw in our uh, Blood Bowl Slack channel that apparently Adrian didn't know we had because <laughs> we we quarantined it like we did 3D printing. Um, it was a th- Reddit thread from two years ago um, titled "Why Are Most of the Online Passing Charts Wrong?" So it's a ruler, mm-hmm. and you measure from the center of a square to another square, and you can math that out enough to where you can just make a passing grid that you don't actually need to get the ruler out and see how it works. Right. Uh, this person was making an observation that all the online charts are wrong because the ruler shows it like three squares, four squares, three squares, three squares for the four different passing ranges. And the online charts say three, three, four, three. And he, he continues through this thread to be like, well, you're supposed to hold the ruler up, not put it on the board. That's just what the game says. And starts arguing that perspective is part of the rules, <laughs> and <laughs> that that's and that's just part of the rules. That's how it works. Um, and one of the perfect uh, responses was, uh, even though he was very nice and polite, he was wrong. And consensus and politeness don't matter to the physics involved. <laughs> <laughs> um, other one was good. Uh, no legitimate studies in the area of physics have been published to indicate that rulers change size depending on whether they're on a board or over a miniature player football player's head. It's great A snark right there. Yeah. yeah. Basically, he was just like, well, uh, my eyes are, it's, it's all about the your view of physics, man. Your, eye, your eyes reveal the ultimate truth. Yes. And that's why people <laughs> think the world is flat. Yeah. <laughs> 
Show me the curve, man. Yeah. Show me the curve. <laughs> I had an awesome On- discussion about that, I think, Wednesday night yep. about like the physics of like, what do they actually, what do they expect you to show them? Yeah. It's just la- we'll just launch you in a rocket like 3,200 feet in the air and then you go to the hospital. <laughs> I think launch another rocket and then we're done. <laughs> yeah. You'll get to see the curve and you don't get to come back. Yeah. There was a guy that made his own rocket and went like 3,200 feet in the air and landed hard and had to go to the hospital. Ah. So it was surprising he didn't die. Yes. Uh, but he also did not even get as high as, let's say, a jet aircraft that you can buy a ticket on. Yeah. <laughs> not surprised. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, since there's no bloody minute to fill the time this week, I think it's time for us to jump back into the look back machine yeah. and go back in time. Uh, we've got a few games to cover. Uh, it's been a little while since we did a look back episode. Uh, we're going to start off here from February 1st, 2017. We reviewed Tiny Epic Western. I think the most that this game has hit the table is with the cards that came with the game. I still I, see I, Zach I, use those pretty damn regularly. That's true. I do love those cards for yeah. cribbage. Yeah. Uh, they don't work great for other one like Euchre or something just because there are all four different colors. But it's and it's I bought I bought it separate or I bought uh, it. I it was an add on. It was an add on. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it was yeah. They're I, unusual I, suits. Yes. Yeah. Cowboy well, hats. No. Yeah. But it's I mean they're nicely done cards. I like. Yeah. They're really good cards. Yeah. I like the, I I like the cards yeah. from it a lot. Uh, unfortunately. I did not like Tiny Epic Western at all, so yeah. I've not played it since the review. And none of us have liked it enough to play it since the review. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, unfortunately, like a lot of the Tiny Epics, like I think my favorite is still Galaxies. Yeah. Like I liked the idea of Tiny Epic Quest the most, but it just was so Man. uninteractive. Yeah. Then it made me like, eh. yeah. I, yeah, I've had such mediocre experiences with all of the Tiny Epics that I no longer give a shit about Tiny Epic. Like I even their newest one that was on Kickstarter the, recently. Mm, oh, the tactics. 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 Yeah, it was like I want to get excited about this, but I've been let down by everything Tiny Epic to date, so I won't. Uh so yeah, no new Tiny Epic westerning nope. for us. Uh next up from February 8th, Robinson Crusoe. Oh, look at that. He got it I right. No. Mhm. Uh, Robinson Caruso. There we go. Ah, that. Oh, now I know what you're talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I feel like brother of David Caruso. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. I feel like we've played it since the review. I feel like you, me, and Megan uh, did one more, and then we yeah. we continually talk about, uh-huh. hey, we need to do this. Like, there's been multiple times Megan and I have been hanging out, and like, well, do you want to see if Zach wants to come over and play Robinson Caruso? And then it's like, ah, but it's like eight thirty, kinda... and I don't know if he's gonna want to come over. Got it wrong that time, though. No, I didn't. I definitely said Crusoe. <laughs> mm, I didn't hear it. Zach gave me the eyes that he didn't hear it either. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> um, but to be fair, if you call if if you called it every time I gave you the eyes, Jeff, <laughs> it would just be the podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Adrian says things, and Zach gives eyes. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, um, yeah. I remember, in, I still like the game. I just, I don't, I think... A lot, a lot of our campaign games are co-op, sort of. St- I wouldn't say styled around that one, but like Gloomhaven and really Kingdom Death Monster and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like that gives me that itch. So yeah, see, and I don't do any of those. No, so yeah. I still have the Robinson yeah. Crusoe itch. Yeah, you can always play First Martians instead. Yeah, I, you mm. know, I've actually been considering it. Yeah, see what a rule book looks like for that now. If they hopefully made it better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe I can find a twelfth edition rule book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I mean. Or an app because of Rob, uh, Robinson Crusoe, the um, we were super excited for First Martians, yeah. And then after First Martians, we're like, oh, I'm sort of cool on uh, yeah, Portal Games now for a while. <laughs> They've had a bunch of expansion or the C- Lost City of Z. Is that the expansion or City yes, of Z for, yeah. or something like that for Crusoe? Uh, Crusoe, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, miss, I still those. have that Voyage Voyage of the Beagle campaign one as well, but yeah. it's yeah. I always want to play those, but just never get around to it. Yep. So I would like to play more, but I don't. Next up from February 15th, we've got Manhattan Project Energy Empire. Haven't played it? Yeah. I, this is one that I, it's like Yokohama and a lot of those. It's like, I'd want to play it. I just, I, I don't like the only time I feel like I would play it is I'd bring it to game night. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't feel like teaching people. Probably having to teach people. Right now. Yeah. yeah. But I still, it's still my favorite of the Manhattan Project. See, it's still one of my least favorite of the. Manhattan Project, so mm. I don't really have a lot of desire to play it. Um, I'd, I'd probably I probably rather play Minutes to Midnight now. Yeah, well, that's, that's we, I, you own it. 
I mean, that's not the only reason. Uh, <laughs> you won it. I won it at Geekway. Also, you own it and you didn't ago. have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. And the only time we have played that game. Yep. Yes. It's a theme. Yeah. I still, I think I like Energy Empire the most of the three. You haven't played uh, Manhattan Project Chain Reaction yet. So you'll the know which. One? Yeah. I th- didn't we play that in Adrian's kitchen at some uh, point? I don't know. That was a long time ago. Because then you would have said the four, and then that one's obviously the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's real bad. It yeah. was not, I was not a fan of that one. No. God, fucking Adrian. That, that's ages ago, that kitchen. Yeah. I know. Even though it's been less than a year. I mean, since we were recording in the kitchen, yes. ages. Yes. I think we were in so the that... studio for these episodes we're looking back on now. Yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. It didn't take us long to move into the studio. Yeah. We're like, fuck this echoey bullshit. <laughs> fuck this goblin. Actually, we were waiting on, I think it was because we were waiting on Megan's brother to move back to, yes. to Michigan. Mm-hmm. And then we were like, ah, the guest room is once again available. Put that mattress on that wall. Yep. Next up, uh, from February 22nd, we have Seven Wonders Duel. I think we just did this one solo. Just Seven Wonders Duel by itself. Did we have the expansion with it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh and then I, I be, uh, maybe maybe I, we I, had a comparison with regular Seven Wonders, yeah, but it wasn't really only a Seven. We could look this up somewhere, but it wasn't an actual Seven Wonders review. Yeah, yeah, we we definitely didn't specifically include Seven Wonders, mostly because none of us wanted to try and play Seven Wonders enough times to give it a fair shake. Um, yeah, because I don't think any of us have played Seven Wonders in God. I don't remember the last time I played Seven Wonders. It's mm-hmm. been ages. Um, Seven Wonders Duel, I cooled on it pretty quick. I really liked it like the first couple times I played it, but the more I played it, the rap it just rapidly got to be like, I feel like I'm doing the same thing every single time. Mm. We did we did talk about the expansion in okay. it. So Okay. Pantheon makes it a lot better. I still like it a lot. Um I think it still floats around in my game night bag. Great two player game. Mm-hmm. I know for me, I just there are other two two player games I would rather play at Economy this point. Koji. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Mainly that. Yeah. <laughs> I still like it a lot. Really? And have played it, I think, multiple times since. Occasionally I've seen it after playing it with the expansion, like like one or two times when we went to the game uh the game lounge. And I'm yeah. like, oh they have that. Oh, it's probably just the, the it's base just game. the base game. Never mind. Yeah. Womp womp. Yeah. Uh next up from March first, Arkham Horror TCG trading card game. I played the card game. through card game. a corset campaign. With David uh, after, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's the last I've really touched it. Yep. Uh, even though I want to touch it a lot, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I have to buy a million. Exactly. It's the the LCG mythos curse. packs yeah. now. The uh, very least, it's cooperative, so it's not like like yeah. you can buy it at your own pace. Yeah. But you'd have to, all of them would have to be in stock. But, yeah. In but now to- I'm just buying. C- TCG stuff for everyone to play. Yeah. Because it's not like everyone's collecting their own. Yeah. And it's like me having to build decks for them. Exactly. Uh, and having multiple core sets or getting that new core set mm-hmm. that adds to the original core set. And yep. I think they're just going back around now. Because uh, I think they even went back and did like a Dunnage thing. Probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, like, know, I always uh, liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. Um, par- Part of the itch that I got from it, you know, third edition, I thought did well with that. Yeah. Um. Because it felt like they took parts of that into, they incorporated it well. For sure. Um, Wes still plays uh, the uh, the LCG a lot, so mm. we still know people that play it, but. <laughs> well, is he up on the core set? Or is he up on the Mythos packs? I don't know. Maybe. I, don't know I would be down to play I it again. Need, I remember liking it, but. I just need a friend that has bought all those things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like many things, it's, we need a friend to have it. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, next up on the Look Back Machine. Uh, from March 8th, the day after my birthday, mm. we reviewed The Gallerist. Uh, I have definitely played The Gallerist a few times since we reviewed it. Uh, I would have, I played it at HeavyCon, I know, that year, and I've played it, I think, once or twice since then. Uh, it is still great. I absolutely love The Gallerist. I think I even had it in my bag for the anniversary this year and just didn't get to it. Um, but yeah, Gallerist is fantastic i think i think it's still my favorite v talacerda i don't think i've played it since the review maybe once um but still good um before we decided to play the uh the exit game like when they're when we were still at barbecue uh they were like oh we were thinking of get you know like playing some games blah 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 and it was like okay and it was like 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 what and they're like oh we could do 
Galarus, and then like immediately I'm just pass. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope. Still not a fan of it. Still not a fan of his games. So yeah. womp womp. Yep. Uh, and last up in this look back segment, uh, I told you we had a few of them. Uh, from March fifteenth, uh, we reviewed Lavre, aka Lee Harvey. Lavre. Lavre. Yep. Yeah. Uh, still really like this game. Um, I think played it's it. Paul's still f- like his favorite two or three player game. It's <laughs> easily one of my favorite two yeah. player games. It is so tight at two players. I mean, I I'm one of the few people I think who like Le, Le Havre at every single player count uh, that I've played it at. I I like from two to five. I've enjoyed it at all of them. Uh, you get slightly different. It's tight in different ways. Whether you're playing with two or five, like at five, it's tight in that you barely get any actions each phase. At two, you get more actions, but the like goals that you the feeding requirements are so much higher that it still feels really really tense. Uh, so. Yeah, it's still an Uber game for or you know, Uwe Uwe yeah. Um, meh. I don't. I, I just I never. Yeah, I haven't played it since, and I'm just sort of like meh. Yeah, I know. I know. You. And Paul I would only. Like, I would only be able to play it with Paul or Adrian and just get destroyed. So yeah. pass. <laughs> I've played the app a few times. Um, yeah. They've recently made it iPads. Yeah, they've recently made it so it wasn't doesn't run like trash gotcha. on newer iOS stuff. Uh, did you ever play the two player game? I did. I have it on on my. Well, I don't have it installed right now, but and I think no, I think it's one of the few two player ones I haven't picked up yet. Mm. I've got I've got a couple up there, and I'm I might have Inland Port up there. I'm not sure. Uh, I like it. It it does things a little bit differently. Uh, that I I really like how it does like buying buildings and choosing what things you're activating and how it pays out. But it's it's a very different game. It gotcha. doesn't feel like yeah. La Havre to me. Like I'd rather play two player La Havre than two player only in Lindport. Uh because isn't that what you felt with like all cre- all creatures big and small too? It's what I felt with all of his two player versions of their specific games. Uh same thing with Caverna, like Caver's Cave. I'd rather I'd well, I'd rather play Agricola, but I'd rather play Caverna than like so Caver's Cave is substantially down the chain of Two player Uva games I'd want to play. It's near the Rayholt level. I liked Rayholt. Okay. Uh, I haven't played the production copy, but I uh, liked the demo I played at Liaria last year. Did you want to pay sixty dollars? I Rayholt? did not. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> no. That's why I don't own Rayholt. <laughs> um. But uh. But yeah. All right. That wraps up the look back machine, so we can jump back in and crank it back to <clears throat> 2019. And yeah. we need some sort of like old timey train noise or something sound effects yeah yeah i can i can get you're giving me permission to start putting train effects into the podcast i I mean sweet i can can do a duck army that's about all i can do (laughs) only if only if you do it in very bespoke minimalistic train noise production (laughs) i think that's a good uh look back machine yeah it's it's powered by rubber ducks yes Oh. Only the highest quality yeah. of time travel yep. mechanisms. Uh, now that we're back into March of 2019, though, we can move on to some news and Kickstarters. Till next time, the screams of ducks will power <laughs> <laughs> the time machine. It's, sometime it's, in it's, April. Fuel, it's fueled by nightmares. So yeah, yeah. Some, sometime in April, yeah. the ducks will uh, take us on another journey. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to news, which is not powered by ducks, but by the magic of words. First up in news this week is Clank Upper Management Pack, also known as the Penny Arcade D&D themed Acquisitions Incorporated cards that are coming to Clank. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you're going to PAX East, you can actually get them early uh, through the limited presale that is beginning now. Um, and essentially it is uh, four minis uh, along with cards for them and then a unique starting deck and special powers uh it's going it's compatible both with clank and then also it will be compatible with the upcoming clank legacy acquisitions incorporated that's coming out this fall so you will have multiple things that it can do for you yeah i know acquisitions incorporated has been very popular with the penny arcade and D D world that kind gotcha. of those two circles that sort of cross over in the middle there 
But yes. as a Penny Arcade comic fan and not so much D&D things, they always have them show up every once in a while in gotcha. the strips. And I'm just like, who's that? <laughs> yeah. Wait, am I supposed to understand whatever you're referencing right now? Oh, I need to read up on. No, pass. <laughs> See you Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Well, it's a good thing it's not like a weekly comic or anything. Now, they did that. I, I don't even know if they do that anymore. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. But Paxter is popular. Yes. Yes, it is. Speaking of popular, you remember Dune? Oh, shit. And Sting? Yes. <laughs> Some of the <laughs> best Stewart. graphics I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely. Those sealed shoots, shield suits. And you're having their little, like, dual fight. Yeah. It's an amazing scene. It, so. It's fine. It's not that great of a movie. That's what I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah it's really I mean, not. it's David Lynch, so I'd be yeah. interested for that, but... Yeah. But the board game that has been not around for a very long time and well, very and was, popular. And was sort of around in, for Rex, the uh, Fantasy Flight re-theme of it. Re- Twilight Imperium re-theme yeah. uh, is finally getting reprinted by Gale Force 9, a multi-year licensing deal. Because yeah. that's what originally happened with the original Dune is that they couldn't get the license for it anymore. Hence, yep. Rex. Yes. Yeah, which something must have happened overall with whoever, like maybe the, who holds the license changed because we also are getting the new... Dennis Villanovu Dune movie. Yes. Yeah. Uh so a lot of a lot of new Dune stuff coming back around again. Uh so now's the time. I don't know if something happened there with that uh for the Frank Herbert estate and legendary pictures to create the board game. I yeah. bet it's going to have none of this sick ass eighties, late seventies art in it, and it's gonna be all shit from the movie. Oh, I hope not. Yeah. I've heard Dune's good though. The yeah. board game. I, I've heard a lot of good things about it over the years, but have not ever had a chance to actually play it. Yeah. So, who knows? Who knows? But probably will come out vaguely around the movie, which is like next summer, next fall, something like that. 2020. I think. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Takedo, that sweet walking game, is getting a serene sailing sequel of the sea. Good, good alliteration. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Namiji. Yeah. So um, it's, yeah, follow up. So in Tokaido, you're walking from Kyoto to Ido, and then now you're getting on a boat and doing a nice little sailing trip along the East Sea Road. Um, it's going to be similar mechanics still. Um, there will be a few new actions, uh, but they don't really go into a lot of detail about how any of them work. Um, there's now three decks of cards. Uh, with whales on them, so maybe you get to go whale watching. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that'll be coming out later this year. Um, I'm a f- I'm a fan of Takedo for its just low chill vibes that it gives, and it seems like this will continue that trend. I have not played it, nor have I. I mean, I don't think you would like it. I don't think I would either. You might like it too. Okay, V likes it, so I do like the mechanism behind it of like the last goes first, so yeah. like you can jump way far ahead, but then you're not going to do anything for a while. That's a high rise has the yeah. same sort of thing. I, I, that is a mechanic I like for action selection. Yeah. So next up in news. Next up in news is Above Board, a in-development board game TV show, which I don't think I'm I could... Ron I don't think I could think of a thing that could go more wrong or be okay. <laughs> yeah, I can see it being pretty good. Uh, I'm a little, little jealous because I've had a idea cooking about a travel board game show for a while. Uh but I just don't have any resources to actually produce. Uh, and this sounds like it'll be kind of similar, maybe. Because they, 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 they supposedly it's going to be like Top Gear, but for board games. Which is, again, I could see that going really well or really bad. I, re- I hope it's the f- not the first. The most popular incarnation of Top Gear. Not like the most recent. Well, maybe not even the most recent. But this, the one with Chris Evans. I think that was his name. Um, that was shit. Yeah. But the Chris Evans from our Slack channel. No. Not the Hollywood Chris Evans, a, but the Chris Evans from our Slack channel. A different one who's a different somehow Chris worse. Somehow worse <laughs> than both Chris Evans. Yeah. Um, it's from producer, director, actor Travis Oates, whose main uh career note is he is the voice of Piglet in Winnie the Pooh. Um Okay. I and he was on G four with Will Wheaton in like two thousand two. So hopefully this comes out great. Uh, it doesn't show. It, it says it's going to come to a streaming service at some point. Not which streaming service, but apparently he's so done. I, they're probably trying to shop it right now. Yeah, he's done a lot of work so far with uh, people on board 
at least. Yeah, Jamie Stegmeyer, Stefan Feld, Rainer Knizia, Broken Token, Gamelin Games, Roxley Games. Uh, Tom Vassell has a regular segment on it. Uh, six episodes under construction, which I assume is their way of saying, like, maybe post-production. Some bits are there. Editing, something like that, uh, with many more planned. Yeah. Uh, you shall yeah. see. Yeah, I, I don't know. Some of it, like, comedic parody. I have a very low tolerance for board game parody, like, as comedy. I think about the only person I think who does it well is the, uh, who's the British guy? Which British guy? Uh, not Shut Up and Sit Down, although I do like a lot of their stuff. Uh, I, Zach knows who I'm talking about. He's I, just and fucking I, with and me. And I can't help you at all. Yeah, exactly. That's what makes it so great. <laughs> Come on, Zach. You know who it is. Uh-huh. Let's, let's not draw this out any longer than it has uh, been already. Um, are you talking about No Pun Included? Yes. Or, yeah, okay. Yeah. Efka and his wife, uh, yes. Elaine. Um, oh, and also there's one more. Actual Lol. Yes, also him too. So, yeah. Uh, so there's a couple, and they're all British. That I actually like. In which Top Gear is British, so obviously. But I don't know if Travis Oates is British. <laughs> is is Piglet British? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have not watched anything Winnie the Pooh in a long, long time. Yeah. He was also in a, the Huffle Up movie where he was additional voices, so maybe. The... <laughs> <laughs> Are additional voices British? I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe <laughs> some of them were. Yeah. Uh, last up on news this week. Um Everyone's heard of that Game of Thrones and Denver's own Direwolf Digital has partnered with HBO to make Game of Thrones Oathbreaker, a social deduction game. Coming out hot April when that new season starts. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So not a whole lot of information about this one. Um, it's social deduction. One player starts the game as the Lord of the Seven Kingdoms sitting on the Iron Throne. Uh, everybody else uh, gets divided into the different houses. Um, there's a Hand of the King token, so you kind of help with that. A uh, double-sided game board, probably for different player counts. Six double-sided player boards, probably one for each house, and you can choose to be one of two characters from each house. Uh, and then they say that it's divided into uh, loyalists and schemers, uh, so or conspirators. Sorry. So the loyalists are trying to keep whoever's on the Iron Throne on the Iron Throne. The conspirators are trying to overthrow them, but supposedly everyone has some kind of a secret objective that they're trying to accomplish. So it makes it even harder to tell who the good guys are versus who the bad guys are. So uh, it takes 30 to 45 minutes, five to eight players. Uh, MSRP of 35 bucks. That five player minimum is going to hurt. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I see here that it mentions chaos, but I don't see a ladder in here at all. So... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah. But I'd be interested. I do like Game of Thrones. I mean, and... maybe one of those tracks on the board that we can't quite see is a ladder. Oh, okay. Because it's an order and chaos tracker. Oh, okay. So maybe it's just tracking where on the ladder. Yeah, where on the ladder you're climbing. Got yeah. it. Okay. Uh, all the art and stuff is from the HBO show because... It's a Game of Thrones, know. not a Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah, and, and it's specifically partnered with HBO. Yes. So... Yep. Because they they like they have had HBO games or they have had Game of Thrones games that are that have had the the show pictures it's like Fantasy Flight stuff mainly yeah yes. well even some of that well was no no show. Some, some of it was like art artistic renderings yeah. of like, the books the mini and, yeah. the miniature game is all well that's that's Simon oh that's right and that is a Song of Ice and Fire yes. so specifically the books yeah so yeah indeed that's it for news news is done all done on to Kickstarters. First up is Glenn Moore 2 Chronicles. Uh, very well funded, 126000 of its $40,000 goal, over 2,000 backers and three weeks to go, which you can pledge for 67 whole American dollars. Yeah, so uh, in Glenn Moore, uh, you are a Scottish clan leader from the early medieval ages uh, through the 19th century, uh, trying to grow your clan uh, either through Barley and whiskey, cattle, uh, cooperating or controlling different locks and castles and things like that. Uh, Glenmore 2 specifically is the successor uh, to it and contains everything needed to meet his original uh, vision of Glenmore. So uh, they, it's, it's a lot of the same from Glenmore, like the Rondell, the activation system in the market, uh, things they want to do improve, better material, better game end and better strategy for small territories and things they wanted to add to the game like uh, strategic depth from the clan board 
a new type of tile and new overbuild tiles that you build over what's already there. Uh, and that all kind of adds together. Uh, they're also including eight expansions that are called Chronicles uh, that each add a different gameplay element that you can freely combine however you want to kind of get the exact experience that suits you and your group. I just look at this and I just see, oh, look, it's another East Scottish thing about <laughs> farming and <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, I, I had seen some people complain about the price. Do you feel that it's overpriced for what it is? I mean, when I look like I don't I've never played Glenmore. I'm not really familiar with it, so I don't know what it cost versus what you got out of it. But they have a little gift down here that's the material comparison between Glenmore and between Glenmore 2. And the amount of stuff they're including is obscene. It does look like it's a lot more. Yeah. Uh, a whole nother sideboard that's not there at all. All those chronicles. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I feel like 70 bucks doesn't seem like that. I mean, well, yeah, because it's 59 euros, $67. It's high, but if, if it's really as much game as it seems like, then that doesn't, that doesn't sound unreasonable to me. Uh, I know Glenmore's pretty well regarded. Shipping for this one is not too kind either. If you want U.S. shipping, it's like 14 euros, so that's going to be close to right around 20 bucks. Oh, maybe that's what they're saying, like 87 bucks shipped to you. Yeah, yeah that, I could see that being a problem. Yeah. Especially because, you know, the Kickstarter crowd, they went those sweet, sweet fucking minis. And yeah. There aren't any fucking minis in this one. <laughs> no, but it does have a fairly soon delivery date. It says October uh, shipping. Shipping beginning October, which it's a pretty good turnaround. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't played Glenn Moore, so I don't really know whether to be super excited for this or not. Some people are. That's for sure. Indeed. Not wrong. Speaking of shit, people are fucking insane over. Uh, next up is Root, the Underworld expansion. Uh, $979,000 of its $25,000 goal. Over 12,000 backers and still two weeks left to pledge for $50. 50 bangaroos. Uh, so I'm actually excited for this one. Uh, it's the hottest of shit. It's the hottest of stuff. Are you excited for it because you got it as a birthday present? I am 100% <laughs> excited for it because I, as a surprise birthday present I received on Wednesday, Root and the Root expansion from V and Mike Jones. Uh, the first expansion, uh, Riverfolk. So, yeah, now that I actually have the base game in the first expansion, I'm all ready to jump into the second expansion. Um, so in this, it's going to add... Uh, Two new maps uh, and a couple new uh, players. Two new factions. Yeah, the Grand, uh, the Great Underground Duchy, which are the mole people, and the Corvid Conspiracy. Uh, some which shady, are ravens. Shady fucking crows. Which I saw those and I was like, color me interested. Yeah. Um, so it's going to have uh, just a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, mounted map with uh, mountain and lakeside. So now you can play in the mountain or the lake. And the lake's an interesting one because... There's a big fucking lake in the middle, uh, so everything kind of got has to go around it. Um, uh, new dice, uh, complete law of root, which is an updated uh, rules thing that takes into account all the new factions and everything. Uh, Exiles and partisans deck, uh, a new substitute deck that has persistent powers, and uh, from people that have done the print and play, there has not been a good reaction to the exiles and partisans. Especially because I was uh, Cole did not work on that one. Ah, oh. that probably explains that. Yeah. I like the uh, Vagabond pack that it yeah, comes with. Yeah, it comes yeah. with unique Vagabonds because, now. Because uh, when, like, when you play as a Vagabond, you can do one of many different like versions of it, but yeah. you all have the same raccoon. Uh, but now you can be like a, a squirrel or... Like a cat with a mask? Cat ninja? Cat ninja sort of looking thing, <laughs> yeah. A uh, bear? A, oh, that is a bear, yeah. Maybe a badger? Yeah, a badger on the other side, yeah. And then a rat? Is that a possum? Possum. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it yeah. looks like a possum. Yeah, I don't know. And then another kind of raccoon. Yeah. Uh, and then some resin clearing markers for the that will actually stand up uh and so for the especially for the backside of the original board that's mm -hmm. a kind the, of a custom one. The winner one, yeah. Yeah, but you could even use them if you wanted to make the main map more visible what Which they is are. honestly when I was playing, there were definitely times I was like, What what what's which one is that again? So having those resin ones would be nice too. Yeah, that make it really out. really clear whether it's stone, hedge, or fence, mouse, bunny, or fox uh, clearings. So They have the uh, upgrade pack for the second printing of the rule books. 
and things like that. The the new automated factions, because I guess there was auto, there was some automated. There was mm-hmm. one automated. It was the cats, right? The cat, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the better bot project came along that like tried to make it better. Did, did and, the other four? <laughs> and so they, uh, so this is based on them. I don't know if they did any tweaks to make it fit more what I they wanted, bet. but I bet there is significant yeah. tweaks. I need to figure out what uh, what printings my root and river folk are. Uh, to see if I need to get that upgrade pack. Mm. Uh, you can get a plushie if you want a little uh, Woodland Alliance mouse. Only, only so I can just like s- stab it. Yeah, fucking right, right <laughs> paw on it and then just fucking stab it a Alliance. bunch. Uh, you can also get the base game and the River Folk expansion through this uh, that will have all the updated everythings on it, uh, as well as any of those other little things we mentioned, like the Exiles and Partisans, the Vagabond, or the Resin Clearing Marker. So if you don't want the new expansion, you just want some goodies, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, and then you can get all the original root shit on top of this. Yeah, it's 150 to get everything. Yep. So, which is still a pretty good deal for all three combined. Yes. Because yeah. it comes with all of that. Ex- like, even for fifty dollars, you're getting like heavy air quotes ninety dollars worth of things. Yeah. With all of those like vagabond packs and the clearing markers exactly. and stuff. So and it's yeah. still a deal. Yeah. Unless you unless you're like I don't care about those things. I've definitely seen some people say that. But yeah. Uh, they still backed it. So. <laughs> yeah. They're like, this stuff's stupid back. Yeah, because they're probably going to have to pay $60 for exactly. it without all of that stuff anyways. So it's still a decent deal. Yeah. Uh, and then they're they're sort of slowly releasing print and play for everything with specific dates. It's like the 22nd, 25th, and 31st. So you'll get kind of everything print and playable. Yeah. And with how much people love this fucking game. Yeah. Uh, it's a good fucking game. Yeah. Us too. Shipping on it, still not great. 10 to 15 bucks pretty much until you get to uh, other places where it goes higher than that. Australia friendly shipping though. Nice. 15 whole dollars. If you're in New Zealand, double that. <laughs> they forget you on maps and then they charge you double for shipping. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's uh, the root expansion. Underworld. Next up in Kickstarters is Age of Civilization. Uh, very well funded. 73000 of its $1,600 goal, uh, 2,300 backers, but still about a month left to go on this one. And you can pledge this one for $27. Yeah. So uh, this is a pocket-sized Civ game for one to four players uh, where you're building different civilizations. Uh, they tag it as, uh, instead of playing one civilization over three hours, you can now play three civilizations in 30 minutes. Uh, so similar to say, um, and I just want to say the box is like tiny epic size is what yeah, it looks it's, like. It's a very small, small box. Uh, what's the game with, uh, that has underworld's the expansion. Cause we just mentioned it. Small, small, world. small world. So similar to small world where you play a faction for a bit and then they start to decline and you swoop in your new faction and kind of take over, uh, this one, you're going to be playing three different civilizations. So you could play like Greco Roman culture and do Greece and then Rome and then Byzantium, you know, or you could do. They have tech and wonders as a, a setup you could do where you do like Babylon and then Egypt and then China. Uh, they're not necessarily based on real succession of empires, but you just mix and match three of the uh, the different sieves uh, that you play out over 30 minutes. Um, so they currently, they, they say there's 47 different sieves, which makes for 97,290 possibilities for unique empires, uh, which, I mean, technically they're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh the uh i i really like that like in the feedback section they seem to have a bunch of random people that i've never heard of uh that's like i don't know if these are like instagram people or bgg names like board games underscore above underscore beyond or plays underscore number four days i don't know who these people are uh but they've got clearly heavy you're not in the know clearly not uh, heavy cardboard, uh, says it's frustrating in the right ways for a short little thinky filler civil game. Uh, I think they did really, really well with it. Uh, so it's apparently a thinky filler. So I know how much Zach loves. <laughs> I am twitching. Thinky filler. I'm, I am twitching while you're saying that. Yeah. At least they didn't say crunchy. Nope. No crunchy. Uh, or mean. <laughs> nope. None of that either. Uh, it's 36 bucks. Uh, like I said, they have got 47 different sieves right now. Uh, a bunch of $27. In 36 Canadian, which is 27. Canadian dollar dues, yes. Yeah, $27.10 <laughs> <laughs> and 10 cents American uh, plus shipping. I forgot. Yeah. 
He even knows how much that is in real money. Yeah. I see. <laughs> stupid Canada couldn't even get their own fucking dollar sign. <laughs> I mean, it's not just Canada. Yeah. I mean, it's mostly Canada. Australia also has dollars. Yeah. But their so. shit is always super expensive. So but their shit's like my, <laughs> they they learn. You have to do a double take with them. Yes. At least in Canadian, it's like it's in the realm of reasonability. But uh but yeah, a whole bunch of different wonders and things. Uh, optional buys. You can get a play mat because, of course, you can. Uh, statue starter token, meeple stickers. If you don't want just generic wooden meeples, uh, you can even get your game box gilded. Um, but basically, at the beginning of the game, you get eight action cards shuffled to form a time track. You do them in random order, uh, and then each turn you take actions by assigning worker tokens to the different slots. Uh, three actions on the permanent action card, and the uh, three actions right under the permanent uh, action card are available to choose. The permanent action card kind of moves along. Uh, as as you you go through, so it always gives you six options, basically. Yeah. Uh, and then when you finish your turn, the round ends. The permanent action card moves one slot to the right, and as a result, uh, one action card from the previous round becomes unavailable. And one new action becomes available. So you have most of the same things, so just small additions. So it's not like every round you're having to learn six new cards, which would drag the game on real bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sorry, just. When you when I heard meeple stickers, the first thing that came to my mind it, it was, it was just a sticker that just showed the blank meeple on it, just to be like <laughs> real <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> oh, it comes with stickers. I can make it unique. It's just a colored oh, sticker. It's just a colored sticker. Shit. <laughs> um, but you had different civ cards uh, that give you different abilities and things uh, with main abilities and then legacy abilities from previous ones. Uh, and uh, yeah, rising new civilization is very powerful. Uh, but the number of civil cards each player could own is limited to three. So depending, you know, when you do that, you might burn it all way too early and then not have that late game push you need. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Sounds kind of interesting. Uh, I'd like to give it a shot. 30 minutes seems like a reasonable time for a game like this. Yeah, that's uh, Age of Civilization. So that wraps up Kickstarters. Kickstarters is done. Yeah. So that brings us over to listener feedback, uh, starting with Jeff's favorite segment of the entire show, emails. Emails at milehighgameguys.com if you would like to send us an email. Like Matt has, IP discussion. Hey there, am hi, GGS. <laughs> First off, let me thank you for making public my issue with my invisible penis, IPs. This, is the, this was the Patreon. This blast. was the Patreon. Yes patron that we knew yeah. nothing about except Indeed. his invisible penis problem which we just nailed apparently crushed it crushed um it. unfortunately my surgery isn't free because i'm not canadian and my current country of residence only covers hand shrinking surgery since the end of <laughs> obamacare <laughs> i clicked on your podcast for the first time looking for help with my condition and found podcast discussion ips much to my dismay, I discovered that you were discussing intellectual property and not actual invisible penis. Acute IP. Acute IP. Uh, known in the community as Bacon Syndrome <laughs> or BS. I hope that my $1 contribution brings more attention to the plight of those stricken with complete BS. <laughs> According to Urban Dictionary, I probably supported the wrong MHG guys uh which there is a urban dictionary listening for mhg a discord group consisting of only idiots who have made a name for themselves for being that way <laughs> <laughs> i'd say you supported the right group yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. we need to start a discord though because we don't have a discord <laughs> sure we don't <laughs> so close and that's it for emails at milehighgameguys.com yeah uh awesome email from matt there absolutely uh, we also had some feedback over in Paulo's corner. Uh, first up, we had coming from M uh, over on episode 134, Perpetual Avalanche Energy. Ozak, <laughs> smooth as butter on that intro. I forgot what the show was about after that. <laughs> uh, Paulo commented on the same episode. Uh, episode 134. Very sexy Zach's intro voice threw me off. WTH. <laughs> Which we've still forgotten to mention the Golden Geek Award nomination. Which is too late now. Yeah, yeah it's over. It's over. Yeah. It's done. Hopefully That's you guys. That's what the sensual voices was yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paul... gotta get, get them quick. <laughs> 
Apollo follows up uh, on, again, episode 134. This March Kickstarter projects are just insane. So many great things to be interested in. I want to back. Chocolate Factory, Paladins, High Rise. Wow, there's no punctuation here. I just realized that. Uh, Chocolate Factory, Paladins, High Rise, Key Market, Pursuit of Happiness Expansion, Glenmore 2, Age of Steam, Wavelength, Imnia Magnate, or Imnia Magnate, the first city, Complex City. Obviously, there's not enough money for all this madness. Uh, like diagonal frowny face, slashy face. I don't, I don't really know what to call that. Frowny face. <laughs> <laughs> Scary face. <laughs> Uh, that's it for YouTube uh, over there on Apollo's Corner, uh, which brings us over to BGG, guild number 2731, where we have some follow-up over there. Yep, this is from our Managing Collections discussion. Uh, this is from Mark. I'm a bit late to this, but I just wanted to say that this episode has caused me to immediately list four games for sale locally, because I don't see a world where I would get to them, get them to the table for the first time or again. Thanks. Glad to see we're making a difference. Making a difference in that world. Yeah. I feel like somebody else had uh, had given a similar thing where they're yeah. like, "This discussion prompted me to actually get rid of some shit." Yeah. So we're uh, I'm we're glad like we could sp- uh, Marie Kondo exactly. only. You know, we're a bunch of dudes sitting in a basement instead of somebody with a Netflix show. That's the only difference. Correct. <laughs> uh that uh, wraps up listener feedback for this week. If you would like to get a hold of us, there are multiple ways to do so. You can always send us an email. Emails at milehighgameguys.com. You can jump over to Board Game Geek, uh, where we have a guild, guild number 2731. Uh, You can join that and participate in all of the fun threads and discussions that go on over there. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram slash milehighgameguys. Uh, Follow us and interact with us over on Twitter. I tweet under at MHGameGuys. I am Zach underscore MHGG. I am Jeff underscore MHGG. And on our website, MileHighGameGuys.com, you can find links to ways to interact with us even more, such as our Slack channel, or ways to support the show, uh, namely through our patron, such as our two newest patrons, both at the $1 level. For the roast of all roasts, I will turn it over to Jeff. Uh, First up is Luke. Who gave us a dollar? A dollar. Fucking Luke. He has no cool hands. Zero <laughs> cool hands with this Luke. Uh, also, the only thing I know about Luke is that he got married. I'm sorry. <laughs> In advance. Yep. Uh, we all make the mistake, but just know when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, I just probably speaking from experience. <laughs> You found me at a dark time, yeah. Luke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In your non-cool hands. <laughs> your hot, hot hands. So warm. Just uncomfortably warm all just the time. Just wet all the time. I bet he gives like a, one of those wet, sweaty uh, handshakes just all, all the time. But we're in a freezer. <laughs> Just hot, moist hands. So you say that he'd be nice, though, to be stuck with, like, if you're stranded on a mountaintop? Yeah. You, you could use his hot, but he's only hands. But he's only using it for himself, <laughs> and he's letting you, your fingers, turn black and fall off. Yeah. 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 Rude. Because he's a jerk. Rude. That only pays a dollar a month. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so thank you, Luke, for the dollar a month. <laughs> Uh, hot hand two, Luke. Yep. Two thirds of the podcast really appreciate hot hand Luke. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next up for new patrons, uh, this one is from longtime Slack participant participation award. Yeah, uh, May May uh, yeah. <laughs> constant. Yes, Slack er. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know she gets to play a lot of really cool board games. Yeah. that she can't talk about. Um, she keeps dropping all those names. And fuck you. <laughs> um, fuck you and San Francisco. <laughs> you know what? I don't what what is Ofer paying? Is he still a dollar? Fuck him too. You've seen him in person. <laughs> Just tell him Jeff said fuck you and fuck me, I guess. Um <laughs> Jesus. you hipster West Coast snowflake. Jeff's I hope really, you enjoyed really signing date. all those NDAs. <laughs> Uh, but thank you, May, for yes, supporting the you. show. Now you get access to the one entire channel on Slack that you did not have <laughs> access to before, <laughs> that patron-only channel, mm-hmm. uh, where you can see pictures of 
Jeff's man bun while we record. <laughs> yeah. No one can find your NDAs in there. No. <laughs> uh, so that wraps up uh, all of the uh, how to get a hold of us and everything like that. Uh, this episode, as all of our Wednesday episodes, has been sponsored by Gray Fox Games. While you're listening to this, their new Kickstarter is currently fucking running. Tsukiyumi Full Moon Down launches Tuesday, March 19th, which was yesterday, if you're listening to this, the day we released it. Go check it out. We uh, we reviewed it this last Friday, the first edition. We dug it with standees. We learned there's no swinging dicks uh, on the minis, which I guess for some, a, a for some that might be a con. Yeah. For some that might be a pro, like, hey, I can actually play this with my grandma now. Um, <laughs> you know, but go. I never noticed it, but... I didn't notice it until that third game when I don't remember who pointed it out, but they were like, there's a swinging dick on this card. <laughs> Holy shit. That is definitely a dick. It was German. <laughs> sure. That makes it better. Yeah, it makes it understandable. <laughs> uh, but go check it out. Uh, yeah, they've got a so- couple new factions. Uh, they're going to be included. Well, from the expansions and stuff. Uh, I, I thought yeah. some of them were brandy news. No. Oh. Nothing I've seen so far faction wise is brand new. Oh. But they are factions from the expansion that might be getting shuffled around and such like that. Yes, things yeah. are moved around a bit. Uh, go check out the quality of the minis. All, um, all the minis are out there. And we were wrong. We were speculating. We thought they'd tone it down. There's Nope. It, oh. uh, maybe for the Onis, you said? I think the Onis have a little less, but there was a lot of Oni before. And yeah. we never got anywhere never got close, close to using no. all of them anyways. but um, And the Oni have like one sculpt per size. Yeah. yeah. But they they ev- did that in a few places where they consolidated similar units, like units that were all the same but might have had unique art. But the, no- the nomads and the Oni are the ones that I think really got hit. Everything else seems to be as big as they were, as many as they were. There's a fuckload of bugs. Yeah, the mechs are uh, huge. The mechs are big. <laughs> they did move those to an expansion. I don't know if you said that or not. Yeah, I, I the think, mechs are moved to an expansion. Yeah, I think the base game is no. going to be a little... It's four factions yeah. is the current plan for the base game yeah. instead of five. Yeah. So they're dialing it back a bit, but that's because they're doing all of the minis. They didn't scale back on minis no. at all. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, go check it out. We'll uh, we'll talk about it more in depth uh, next week on our uh, Wednesday episode, since we'll have full access to that Kickstarter and be able to talk about how many millions of dollars it's making. So, uh, Jeff, do you have a prepared statement? Of course. Gray Fox Games, quality games, cleverly crafted. Also, there's no such thing as miracles or the supernatural. Supernatural. Only cutting edge technology nano machines. Yeah. Is that literally the answer for everything in that game? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Psychic man, nano machines. Yeah. Dude on f- fire because he wanted vengeance so bad that he didn't die. Nano machines. Sounds like the writers need to get a new crutch. There's a whale that swallows a helicopter. It's a fire whale. Uh, Oh, Nan- good. Nano I was gonna, probably nano machines. I was going to say, that seems <laughs> unrealistic, but then he said fire whale, and I'm like, oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those fire whales, they're dangerous. <clears throat> True. Cool. So you think nano machines are going to be in Death Stranding? Or gonna... <laughs> There's going to be something very nano machine related. I guarantee it. That, that game's going to be a... F- He's off the chain. Yeah. There is no leash involved nope. in his creative. Sony just gave him wads of money and said, do what you need to do. Yeah. And it's going to be... Weird. It's going to turn out to be just like a fucking like uh, um, American like road trucker game <laughs> where you haul things from like point A to point yeah. B. And that's the whole game. That would be hilarious. <laughs> I bet he'd do a great version of that, though. That would be weird. It's going to be the best one of those games <laughs> yeah. there's ever been. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, right on. That uh, that wraps up the episode. We're all done. Be sure to tune in on Friday for uh, our put to the question for where we asked all of you lovely listeners uh, to give us a bunch of stupid questions, uh, board game related or not, to answer. Some stupid, some not. Uh, Some stupid, some not. Uh, We asked for stupid questions. People just also gave us real questions. Uh, But we got a bunch of questions to answer. And uh, You'll you'll finally find uh, somehow my voice will be totally fine. (laughs) Yeah, not a chance. (laughs) Not a chance. But uh, be sure to check that out, and then we'll be back next week on our regular schedule. Uh, with Wednesday news, Kickstarter, and banter. And uh, I think we're looking at Dinogenics for a review, but we haven't locked it down for sure yet. Yeah. So we'll keep you posted. You'll hear about it probably on Wednesday. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Right on. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. As always, I've been your host, Adrian. I'm still Zach. And I'm Spooky Jeff. 
<laughs> Bye. 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 We all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com.